Year is 1949. Following a four-year-long conflict and mounting international pressure, the Dutch government finally recognized the independence of its former colony of Indonesia. 350 years of Dutch rule in the archipelago came to an end. But how did this come to pass? How did a state as small as the Netherlands come into a position to control a colony almost 50 times its size and half the world away? Muslims and Buddhists, Hindu kingdoms, and over 600 native ethnic groups. In the end, they will all be subjects to the Dutch Republic. Because you are our subscriber, you should definitely check out our sponsor over at Squarespace. This incredible website builder includes so many features like easy link to all social media platforms, support for podcasts, integrated analytics, but also mailing lists and email campaigns. Regardless of your future projects, having a well-structured website is of great help. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence. And to to do so, you don't need specific skills in building a website. For that, Squarespace has you covered, allowing anyone to very quickly design a well-structured, beautiful, and easy-to-navigate platform. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Following the Declaration of Independence in 1581, the Dutch Republic was involved in an 80-year-long war against its former overlord, Spain. Spain was by now a major colonial power, with its influence reaching every corner of the known world. Bound to Spain by a personal union under Philip II, Portugal, with its own colonial empire, was obliged to fight the Dutch too. The fledging state had a navy capable of fighting both the Spanish and Portuguese fleets, and thus, recognizing its strength, employed a strategy of attacking the overseas possessions of its enemies, diverting the attention from the European theater of war. Both the Portuguese and Spanish were firmly established in the Indonesian archipelago, holding on to the port city of Malacca and the Philippines, respectively. The spice trade flowing through these lands was hugely lucrative, and soon caught the attention of the Dutch merchants. Peppercorn and cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and others used in medicine as well for spicing up the meals of Europe's wealthy. The first expedition sent by the Dutch was under the command of Cornelius de Houtman. Houtman spent two years in Lisbon, a European capital of spice trade at the time, gathering information about the archipelago and learning about possible trade prospects. Upon his return, a trade company was formed and a first expedition outfitted in 1595. Down the coast of Africa, along the Cape of Good Hope, and through the Sunda Strait, the Dutch sailed, eventually reaching the island island of Bali. The island kings concluded a treaty of friendship and trade, and the Dutch were able to purchase a few pots of peppercorn. The purchase, although small, covered the costs of the entire expedition. The successful competition of the voyage convinced the investors that the Dutch can replace Portugal as the main spice supplier to Europe. In 1598, five expeditions numbering 22 ships set for Indonesia. Thirteen of these ships went via the Cape Route and nine of them through the Magellan Straits. The captain of one of the westward-bound ships returned home sailing via the Cape Route and became the first Dutchman to successfully circumnavigate the globe. Under the command of Jacob van Neck, the second Dutch expedition, numbering eight ships, reached the port city of Bantam. The Bantamers, by the time in conflict with the Portuguese, welcomed the Dutch and traded willingly with them, and as a result of that, Four ships loaded with peppercorn were sent home. The remaining ships traded along the northern coast of Java, the Banda Islands, and Ternate. Upon the return of the last ships of the expedition and closing of accounts, a staggering 400% profit was declared. In 1600, a trade mission under Stephen van der Hagen concluded a treaty with the ruler of Amboina. The Dutch were allowed to establish a fortress, the so-called Castel van Ver, and were promised the delivery of all the cloves produced on the island. This event set the blueprint for further dealings with the natives and can be considered as the start of the Dutch colonization of Indonesia. The lucrative trade needed to be regulated. Prices were rising due to competition between the merchants of different companies 
colonies, the hostilities of the Portuguese and the Spanish was a cause of great concern. Furthermore, the formation of the English East India Company threatens to undermine the established Dutch trading routes. These factors convince the Dutch that only through a united national effort can they secure and expand their trade, and thus the Dutch East Indies Company was formed. Its goal, gaining supremacy in the Asian trading sphere. Its constitution was laid on in 1602 by the Dutch States General. It was granted monopoly on trade in the regions between the Cape of Good Hope and the Magellan Straits, the power to make treaties with the local rulers, build forts, maintain armed forces and garrisons, and install officers of justice. In the mainland Netherlands, each significant port city was to have a VOC chamber, with the biggest one being an Amsterdam. Reflecting the entrepreneurial spirit of the Dutch, each chamber would set out ships independently, but the profits and losses were to be shared by all. Following the founding of the company, the Dutch increased their efforts in maintaining and increasing their trade network. New factories were established in Java, Makassar, Ceylon, and mainland India. The struggle to oust the Portuguese and Spaniards from the archipelago at first had mixed successes, however. A Portuguese fleet was to destroyed in Johor in 1602, but the attacks on Malacca and Philippines were beaten back. The perceived unstable Dutch position in the archipelago encouraged a new competitor, the English East India Company. At first, the English followed the Dutch, hoping to profit from the pioneer work of others. English factories were established in Ake, Jakarta, and Makassar. Allies at home against a common foe, the Spanish crown, the Dutch at first treated the English according to a policy of live and let live. The Dutch soon realized that the spice market in Europe was limited. Further European competition in the archipelago was going to encourage the native rulers to sell the spices at a higher price, while at the same time, English merchants were to cut the selling price of the spices back in Europe, severely reducing the possibilities of a profitable trade. Therefore, starting in 1608, the Dutch fleets and governors operating in Indonesia were ordered to monopolize the trade and oust any further European competition. Incident after incident followed the two rival companies undermining each other's trade in the region. Under the pressure from their respective governments, the two sides met at London in 1613 and in Hague in 1615, but no agreement was made. Following the failure of their negotiations, the Dutch finally resolved that the only method of maintaining and enlarging their trade was outright conquest. The newly appointed governor of Dutch Indies, Jan Cohen, insisted on a policy of territorial expansion and expelling of the Spaniards, the Portuguese, and the English. The spice trade was recognized as a matter of national security, and therefore was to be defended and monopolized by all costs. His first moves included securing the Moluccas and Banda Islands. The factory at Jakarta was enlarged and fortified against the expressed orders of the local ruler, the Pangaran of Jakarta and his suzerain, the Sultan of Bantam. Encouraged by the English presence in the area, the Pangaran gave the ultimatum to the Dutch to withdraw from their fort. The Dutch, having refused the request to leave the fort, braced themselves for battle, and a four-month-long siege began. Jang Cohen retreated to the Malakas, gathered a relief force, and defeated the besieging forces and razed Jakarta to the ground. On its site, a new city was founded, one that would be the headquarters of the VOC in the east. In honor of the supposed ancestral tribe from which the Dutch hail from the Batavi, the new city was named Batavia. Following the defeat of their main ally in the region, the English were unable to cling to their holdings. Their factories were either destroyed or captured, and they were, over time, ousted from the region. The Dutch at last had a free hand in dealings with the natives, and steadily began expanding their influence while suppressing that of the Portuguese and Spain. In 1641, Malacca was conquered, and the Spanish expelled from the Malaccas, leaving the Dutch as the strongest European power in the archipelago. In 1656, 
The Sultan of Ternate was captured and then later reinstated as the de facto vassal to the company. The positions of the country on Sumatra were secured after a punitive expedition against the Sultan of Palembang. In 1666, the Sultan of Tidore recognized the Dutch overlordship. In 1667, Makassar followed the same fate. The Dutch positions on Java were secured in 1682 with the capture of Banten, and in 1684, after an intervention in a civil war in the Sultanate of Mataram, the strongest power on the island. Owing its rise to the throne to the Dutch, the new Sultan gave vast political and economic consciousness to the Dutch, effectively becoming a client state. At the turn of the century, the VOC was at its zenith and an undisputed master of Indonesia, but its position was hard won. The maintenance of the forts and armed forces, piracy and wars with Great Britain steadily decreased the profits. Following the slow decline in the second half of the 18th century, the Fourth British-Dutch War proved disastrous for the company, and it went bankrupt. After the conquest of the mainland Netherlands by the French in 1795, the VOC was nationalized and finally dissolved in 1799. The Dutch rule survived the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, only to be interrupted by the Japanese occupation of Indonesia in World War II. Following the defeat of Japan, Indonesian independence was declared in 1945, and the Netherlands finally recognized the independence of the new country in 1949. Their three-and-a-half-century-long rule over the archipelago came to an end. Again, a huge thank to our sponsor Squarespace. Don't forget to check them out.